Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion on future world vision. My guest today is David O'Day, Principal at O'Day Engineers, a Technical Region Director on ASCE's Board of Direction, and he also serves on an advisory team for the Future World Vision Program. Welcome, David. Thanks, Casey. It's great to be here. ASCE recently launched a comprehensive program called Future World Vision to anticipate, reimagine, and prepare for the future changes in the built environment. What is this new program about? Well, the Future World Vision will consist of two phases. The first phase we've already completed. It was a deep dive into different trends and scenarios that would illustrate how the future world might look for civil engineers. The second phase that's currently underway is in many ways the most exciting part of the project. We're going to create 4D experiential virtual reality models of five different cities of the future, all inspired by the first phase and our, and our report from the first phase. In these virtual reality models, uh, you will be able to immerse yourself in the city and really it will bring our best ideas as a profession to life for anyone to see who is interested in the cities of the future. We hope that this will engage and inspire our peers, uh, other stakeholders, and most importantly, the next generation of civil engineers who need to be prepared to cope with these eventual futures. The first phase of the project used future scenario analysis to predict community models that might develop over the next 50 years. Why use scenario planning analysis and how will this help civil engineers plan for the unexpected? Well, scenario planning is a very powerful tool that was developed by the top companies, organizations, and government agencies in the world over the last few decades to make plans and test out strategies in an uncertain future. Fundamentally, when organizations and managers of those organizations get together to, uh, uh, to plan for the future, they will have an inherent unconscious bias to think that things will kind of continue to be the same or even get better. This unconscious bias that's natural uh, because we tend to extrapolate from history is something that can leave dangerous blind spots in our planning process. What's worse, when we work as groups uh, together and those groups lack diversity, we can engage in something called groupthink. And this can also be very dangerous because it reinforces our unconscious biases towards thinking that things that the way they are now will just kind of continue and we uh, will just have positive outcomes. So you're, not, you're looking at the future, but you're not predicting the future. That's right. Scenario planning is not about predicting the future. Instead, it's about doing a deep dive into the data that defines the different trends that will shape the future. And then developing stories that put together different outcomes from those scenarios working together that really explore the boundaries of what our picture of the future might be. In this way, we can break out of the tunnel vision that we might naturally have as a group trying to plan for the long term with uncertainties. So in our process in the future world vision, we had to look at trends like climate change, smart cities, uh, sea level rise, um, uh, automated construction technologies, artificial intelligence, and think about how these things might play out over 10, 25, and 50 years. We've now published our results on our website, futureworldvision.org. And you can learn about four different scenarios that uh, our team, working together with the best minds in civil engineering, but also other stakeholders outside of our profession, came up with to think about those very boundaries of the future. Uh, we call them resilient cities, progressive mega cities, dispersed settlements, and unequal enclaves. You'll notice from these scenarios that they're not all good outcomes. Some sound better than others. That's right. There's the, that's, that's really the point. There are both positive and potential negative outcomes. What we want engineers to do is to look at what they're doing to plan for the future, whether it's training practitioners in their organization, uh, forming the educational system that we'll have for future engineers, or making uh, plans as a, govern, a government agency. And think about all of those potential outcomes 
to try to reinforce the positive outcomes and avoid the negative outcomes for society. Let's look at one of the key trend drivers you were talking about, climate change, which is identified in the Future World Vision Project. How could this project help civil engineers in coastal areas of the United States grapple with sea level rise issues? Well, climate change is certainly one of the fundamental trends that really influences all of what we're doing with the Future World Vision. And as it turns out, the first stage of our second phase of the project in which we're creating a 4D experiential model in virtual reality. It's a very exciting way of immersing yourself um, in these, these scenarios. It's something called the floating city. Now, we've got five of these cities that we're going to develop. The floating city was based on uh, a model where people develop technologies to have a fully stationary offshore city. Now, we're not predicting that this is what's going to happen. You know, it might take decades before such a, such a thing, such a scenario could actually take place. However, by going inside the floating city, by, by experience, experiencing this, this model, which we just did at our ASCE convention in Miami in October, uh, people can uh, learn about technologies that are either under development or may come in the future to help us cope with some of the impacts of sea level rise. For example, uh, we could develop floating platforms that are just offshore or perhaps right at the, sea, uh, at, right at the coastline in cities uh, that are currently trying to cope with the effects of flooding uh, on their shore, nuisance flooding and higher levels of flooding due to storm surge events. Sounds like there are a lot of leadership opportunities for the civil engineering profession over the next 50 years. Absolutely. I firmly believe that civil engineers, uh, if we plan our future right, and we prepare ourselves, will be the leaders and innovators that help society solve its hardest problems moving forward. Thanks, David. It was a great conversation. Thank you, Casey. For more information on ASCE's interchange program, visit ASCE.org interchange. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange.